Elderberries are a great plant to have on the homestead. Not only can you make really delicious pies and jams and jellies, but they are most known for their medicinal properties. However, if you have looked at buying elderberry plants lately, you have seen that they are a little bit expensive. I had to buy some elderberry plants last year and the cheapest that I could find around where I live, they were between 30 and $40 per plant. However, you can get a massive amount of free elderberries if you have a well-established, at least three-year-old elderberry plant for very, very easy. The th this is my elderberry plant that's going on four years old. And as you can see, it's growing great. We've got a lot. However, you do need to have two different varieties so that they can pollinate one another. And that was why I had to buy a different elderberry plant to bring on the homestead last year because I didn't have a pollinator for this one. So this one was growing great. I was getting tons of gorgeous blossoms, but because it didn't have a pollinator, the blossoms weren't turning into berries. So I do have my other pollinator variety now, but this, because it's an older plant now, is ready to be taken back. So you can see, Right now at the time of this recording, I've actually got a little bit of new leaf growth. It's still pretty, we're in winter, so I'm not gonna get anything leafing out yet, but I can definitely see where these leaf nodules are. The plant is still in dormancy, so this is the perfect time to take elderberry cuttings. So what we're gonna be looking for is we wanna make sure that we've got some sections where I've clearly got a leaf node here at the top and then one down lower at the bottom because I need this part to be the root and this is gonna be the new plant that's going to grow. So we're gonna come through and clip that back. Now some of this one's a lot, a lot larger and you can see where here I've got a lot of the new growth that's happening. Uh, and then down here, I don't really have a whole lot. So you'd see that there's not like a lot of the new little leaf nodes that you can see popping out. It's still very viable. You can see it's green there where I cut it. So this is still very much alive. It's just, you don't see those there. Now, the other great thing about doing this is with your elderberry plants, if you trim them back, which as you can see, I have not been doing because this is, this is the original part when we first put the bush in, and this is really wide. I mean, that's almost like a, a branch at this point. I'm not even sure I'm gonna be able to get through here with this. I'm probably gonna have to go and grab my lopers to take this down. But if you take it down the whole plant to here, then you are going to get an explosion of growth. You're gonna get a lot more from the plant. It's kind of the whole um, process of knowing how to prune because if you prune your fruit and berry bushes the correct way for each plant, then you are creating it so you're gonna get more and more of a harvest versus if you didn't prune at all. And this is my first year taking the elderberry plant back because it's finally old enough. I wouldn't do it with my really young plants in that one, but this one is definitely old enough in order to do that. And this is something that I actually learned from a good friend of mine who is a gardener and does a lot of grafting, a lot of fruit growing. And he's like, well, you're taking your elderberries back every year, right? And I'm like, no, I just started growing them. So he walked me through this process. And if, if learning from people who have been doing something for a very long time, even though this is my first part with the elderberries, but I was learning this from someone who has years and years of experience, we are gonna be doing a in-person gardening workshop at the farmstead. And my friend, Seth Smith is his name, is going to be teaching on site. We're gonna be going through elderberry care with him as well as growing citrus, putting in a full vegetable garden, using herbs and creating an entire system to grow a year's worth of food for your family, including herbs. So we'll have the link beneath this video if you wanna check that out. Now I'm gonna go through and take a lot more cuttings off of here, but once you've got your first little cuttings, we need to get these in the ground.
so I know in this section that we have got some sandy soil beneath the surface and then I have some compost that I had put on top when I had planted some flowers here last year. So I know that this soil is very well draining. You wouldn't want to put it in anything that had a lot of clay um, or that just had a, was really saturated um, compact soil. So we're going to take the end that we want to be our roots here and we're going to put that down into the soil. Now I'm putting these fairly close together because I'm just putting these in here to give them a chance to root. I will be taking all of these up once we hit spring and they have actually rooted and I'll be putting them in their permanent growing spots. The importance of knowing where to plant plants so that they will thrive is super key. For example, this is an elderberry plant that I got at the exact same time as the other one that you just saw. However, it didn't thrive in the location where it was at. And instead of moving it after the first year, I'm like, oh no, I'm just going to add some more amendments to the soil. It'll be fine. Well, Finally, by the second year, I realized it's not going to be fine. It's, it's struggling, it's almost dying every year in that spot. So I moved it over here, but because it struggled for two years and then I had to transplant it, you can see it's a much smaller plant. It's not nearly as vigorous or as large as the other one. Now it will, now that it's doing better in this spot, it will eventually get that big. However, this plant is on its fourth year as well. So I'm going to go ahead on this main, on this big larger one here, and I'm going to prune this one back to get some cuttings off of this one as well. But you can see if you don't really know what best situations for each plant is and you plant them in the wrong spot, it can really affect the harvest and the health of the plant. All right, so we will leave these here and we'll come back and check them in a few months and hopefully we'll have a bunch of root growth and a lot of new little baby elderberry plants. If you wanna learn more about growing elderberries in depth, we'll link to the video and the blog post that I go full in depth on choosing elderberries, different varieties, everything you need to know. And if you wanna come learn in person how to put in both fruit, vegetables, crop rotation, and grow a year's worth of food at your family without making the mistakes that I have made first, make sure you check out that in-person workshop as well.